Ronaldo once again. Well, season 1982 has drawn to a close on this one day in September, and tonight, on that was the season that was, we look back on a season of change, a season of controversy and a season of magnificent football. It was a year that saw South Melbourne move north amidst great political upheaval and become the Sydney Swans. We saw coaches Tommy Hafey and Royce Hart sacked mid-season, Bradley medalist Malcolm Blight topped the century mark, and one of the warmest winters on record. Tonight, let's sit back and reflect on that was the season that was. Now here comes the spirit of the Zaley Out there for Sydney In there and fight The spirit of Kazali The red and the white Out there for Sydney Kazali lives on High fly in red blood And we're the Sydney swans We're the Sydney swans a gala launching at the Opera House, a guest list of show business and sporting personalities, and a promise that Sydney would soon be proud to have its own Australian football team. The VFL hoped to draw 20,000 people to each of the Swans' 11 games at the SCG, beginning on Sunday, March the 28th. The matches will be televised live to Melbourne by Channel 7 and replayed for Sydney viewers on Monday nights. But behind all the fanfare, organisers admit that Sydney is still a rugby league town. Historically, they've followed rugby in Sydney for 50 or 100 years, and that's not the crowd we're trying to get at all. But we do believe that uh, our game is really uh, can be marketed well, and there's also a lot of expatriate Victorians, and certainly for a start, they'd be the people we'd be looking at. The 1982 season started in thumping style when Richmond and Fitzroy met before 38,000 at VFL Park in March. The Tigers had replaced Premiership coach Tony Jewell with 300-game veteran Francis Burke, had installed David Clerk as skipper, and with a 41-point win over the 1980 finalists, gave the first indication of the successes ahead. Coleman collected. Martello and Coleman. Wilson, snap at goal, looks good, it's through. Full points to Fitzroy. Out the best player on the ground in this first uh, quarter. It bounces right for Superboot Quinlan, a snapshot for goal. It's going close, it'll go through, it'll be Short pass, too short in actual fact. Put Parrish right under pressure. Reigns playing well first term. Beautiful spin out by Jeff Reigns. Absolutely splendid. Huggerman couldn't take the mark. Smith back to Muggerman. Good play, Richmond. The Tigers go forward with a short pass. Too long for Bartlett. Can Taylor make it three goals in the first quarter? Bartlett calls for it. Taylor it's a goal. Carlton unfurled their 1981 Premiership pennant against Fitzroy the following week and by half-time led by 32 points. Punched away by Southby, Buckley in position, couldn't handle it cleanly but manages to get the ball away with a nice piece of football. His hand pass accepted by Glasscott, he's put down after the kick but it's called play on as Duel gets it across to Marku and as Marku puts it up to Johnson, he dummies, puts the left foot forward up towards the goal square, almost, well good piece of Shepherd, he won't make Webby, a great goal by Johnston, wonderful teamwork by Carlton. Back position. And we find Sheldon putting it wide. A nice bounce for Greg Wells. Gives a hand pass up to Mark Koo. The little fella's clear from centre wing. Has time to steady. Put the ball wide. Looking for Basasto. He gets a good bounce from the boundary line. Goes for the short pass. Wonderful play for Basasto to bring up a goal to Alan Montgomery. Towards Coates. Coates from the forward pocket. Cooks it towards goal. He can swing it back. It goes across the face of goal. But a mark to Fitzroy's Wilson. Gary Wilson plays on straight away, puts it through and they're in front. Well, 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 what a remarkable recovery. A remarkable recovery by Fitzgerald. Skipper Troy. Wilson put the Lions in front and then well. this kick he's tied things up. Umpire said play on. No, he said holding the man. I can't believe that. He had the ball, Bob, didn't he? Well, what will it be? Any score will draw the game if it's a point. The kick from Wells won't make it. The siren is a draw. It's a draw. There it is, the siren at Princess Park. Long kick to four. Peter Dacos gave Collingwood a few moments of glory as Geelong went on to record an 88-point win over the Magpies. This was a match that was to prove prophetic in 82. There's some mistakes down there at the moment, and Bruce Dan Kerr's a goal to Dacos. Seen them... Uh, do the wrong thing here, going around the flanks uh, many times and come unstuck. In fact, Collingwood beat them three times last year. Turner, flying shot at goal. Well shepherded through by Mossop. 
and the Geelong vice captain brings up his second goal. So the Cats really driving the nails right into the coffin now. Across the Hodgman, the Cracker Brothers the made their debuts, and it took Jimmy just 10 seconds to start repaying North Melbourne's quickly, bill. That's Jimmy Cracker in towards full forward. Tanner sees it through, and there's the opening score for North Melbourne. A magnificent kick right up towards the centre half forward position, almost a mark. Grabbed by Blight into the open goal on the left foot. And Malcolm Blight has put his first one through for 1982. A bit slow getting to that. The Tigers were to turn a 21 point deficit into an 18 point win in, in a boil over before nearly 39,000 people at the MCG. Here's great recovery by Hounsell. That was a good tackle. He's in the pocket, screws it back. That's not a bad goal. Oh, great shot. Now Melbourne Set captain Flower. Uh, a great Sydney shot from Evans. Pretty much to their heart. Kicked by Evans. Oh, there's a beautiful shot for now. Another one to Evans. Offloaded with the ball. Hounsell again. Hounsell, who has pace. Hounsell onto the left foot. Steps it down. Great shot for Hounsell. Four points. John Roberts kicked four today, and here's one of them. Quick kick for goal by Roberts. He's put it through. Smith. Now Smith. Melbourne recovered early in the last quarter against St Kilda to win its first home match since the 13th round of the 1980 season. Carlton's woes continued when they met Essendon before 60,000 at VFL Park. And it's a good goal kicked by Timmy Watson. Three times in the second half, the Blues got to within 11 points, but the Bombers took top spot on the ladder with a 26-point win. A very tight shot for goal, though, hard against the behind post. He'll play on, which he's done now, and hooks it in. It's a goal. Two Bazzasto, clever thinking, Peter Bazzasto. They're in front with Dacos. 1981 grand finalists Collingwood and Carlton had won only one match between them when they met in a fiery encounter at Victoria Park on the Saturday of the Easter split round. McCormack, a great player at fullback, over to Byrne. They combined well, don't they? Byrne to Barham. Barham goes for the short pass. It's effective. Taylor on the run at goal. This time it's OK. Just when the Magpies started to look good, the Blues moved into top gear and went on to record win number one in 82 by 34 points. Perhaps a goal, going close. Malin's there anyway, it'll be a goal. Another one to Carlton. Tip will see it over the line, but Bazasto keeps it in play. Over to Sheldon. Another goal coming up for Carlton. Bush trying to get North skipper the Wayne Schimmelbush was the inspiration behind the Ruse 64 point win over the Lions at the Junction Oval. But again, he received great support from the Crackers. Chance of a goal coming up. Schimmelbush is steady. Puts it forward. There's no mistake about that. It's... McCann got the ball down towards Jimmy Cracker. The quick hand pass across to Hodgman. Hodgman goes towards goal. Brings up his fifth goal. Oh, and Gary Dempsey takes it, gives a hand pass towards Phil Cracker, really coming into the things in this term. Cracker goes goalward, a beautiful looking kick by Phil Cracker. Hodgman, 50 metres out from goal, will play on quickly. He balked the opposition, his court from a bush. Back to Hodgman, and North Melbourne doing it relatively easily as Hodgman kicks his sixth goal. Uh, behind. Can't take the Swans mark. made it two out of three when they beat the heavily undermanned Saints. So heavy was the St Kilda injury list that coach Alex Jezelenko had eight players with a total of just 12 games between them. A great goal. Trying to get the mark coming through. It's Doug Cox. Have a look at the pace on Cox. He could be caught. No. Beautiful play by Doug Cox. That's the way to play the game. Right down the centre. Browning misses. Over to Duke Russell. He swings back onto the right foot. Now he's back with the hand pass. Out wide looking for Packham. Packham looks a little bit slow to me, but he's a, pretty, he's a bit of a goer. Gets the hand pass in. Over to Hodges. Back to Fabia. Fabia back towards Packham. Packham lines up 40 metres out. This is a goal. Great goal to Packham. Top play. 
there by the Saints. A long kick, looking up there for Bennett. Up in front, over the back of the pack. In comes Packham, off the ground. No, it's down! Cowie! Machini, he'll have a snap for goal, but um, couldn't get boot the ball. Allen now trying to hand pass back over to Morwood. Tony Morwood is shooting towards the... Uh, in towards the centre square, nobody can mark that ball. Here's Fashini again, a snap over his shot. Oh, beautiful goal! Fashini! Carlton coach David Parkin reacted angrily when his former teammate Lee Matthews flattened the Blues' Ken Hunter. His players, however, provided the answer with these eight goals in one stunning 11 minute burst in the third quarter. Takes it, Mark, who shoots it back to him again. Raskin picks up into Malin. Malin, another chance from the boundary line. It's this time, is he on target? forward. The chance for Fitzpatrick. No mark paid. It's a chance now for Rosasto. Yes. Rosasto's fourth goal. Over the top to Hunter. Another score coming up. Oh, Hunter. And around toward the half forward flank. Schwab can't take the mark. Ashman's there. Rosasto come on the scene. Ashman did it well. Now he looks for he thought of a hand pass. Goes toward goal with a shot. Another goal out from Carlton's goal, Fitzpatrick taps it down, Ashman shoots a goal, another one, out the back to Ashman, could be another goal for Ashman, and is another goal, 30 and a half minutes have gone, the final quarter, Buckley to Mark Hewitt, could be another Carlton goal, it's a goal. A disputed goal meant little difference when the Tigers and Magpies clashed on April the 17th at VFL Park. Four points. Burns thought he touched it, so did I. Coming in to meet it now is Richmond Peter moved Moore. to the top of the ladder, remained undefeated after four rounds, and with Collingwood skipper Peter Moore off with a hamstring, moved to a 32-point win. The star of the day was jumping Jimmy Jess, who took 13 marks and had 16 kicks at centre-half back. Well, Cloak and Williams both uh, miss it. Jess doesn't. What a game he's played. 4 4 there. There's Jimmy Jess coming in for it. And he's marked it. Of it drives Collingwood into attack up towards their left half forward flank. Guess who's there? A little dropping a little bit short. Jess again. Great mark. I think Magro's under pressure. There's Jess coming in again. And what a game, Jimmy Jess. 12 that marks. 12 marks to jumping Jimmy Jess. And watch him in action. Towards goal, Barker can't It get was a round that saw Jess's lowly Saints hit form. Good pass, too, but oh, it, uh, it's a. Free kick to Dunn, over the shoulder. Bright and Barker, Terry Bright, be careful. No, no, Donald. Riding on Trevor Barker's back, they back cruise to a 13-point win over Geelong. Pulled out, Barker, hooks it goal from an impossible angle. Madden tried to get it down, but stolen by Cracker. Which one's this? Let's have a look, it's Jimmy. <laughs> what a kick by Jimmy! What a kick! Oh! Towards full forward. The high flyers in front is good. Hasn't got it. Here's a snap at the goals. It's a high one. A beautiful snap. Was it Spencer? No, it was in Duck Daly. After a career that saw him detour through Collingwood, Melbourne, and Essendon, fabulous Phil Carmen turned up at Arden Street against the Magpies. I think. That's the way it seems. By uh, Spencer. Greg. Abernathy. Goal coming up here if he's accurate. While North Melbourne had brilliant players like Abernathy, they had no one to match the might of Peter Dacos, who kicked six goals in one third quarter burst. Dacos in trouble, a snap for goal. What's he done with it this time? A goal. Acting captain Michael Taylor. Dacos pounces on the ball. Flying shot at goal and has put it through. Lovitz kicked towards the point of the square. It goes over the head of Peter Dacos. It bounces up into his arms now. Dacos running in. Goal number three for the corner. There's another go for Dacos. It's gone too long. Oh, beautiful play. Tapped on beautiful Dacos for goal number six. Up to the, the Hawks trailed Richmond by a goal when they met for the first time at Prince's Park, but with a fine team performance, went on to win by three goals and moved to the top of the ladder. Hooks it over the back, no forwards ready, Jess gets there first, straight to Tuck, another chance of a goal, as Tuck comes right up to the wall, it's a goal earlier, touched off the boot, and only one point. How far did he run? <laughs> Open the spot of bother, it's a chance for go, no back on our end there, Pulpy Horn a chance, other hand passes on, chance for Goss, he's wrong footed, gives it to Matthews, he's caught, 
Gets a shot toward goal. And what's he done? It's a goal! Oh, the kick travelling well. It's over that. No, a good march of Martello, I thought. The Swans looked like winners against Geelong until a cool cat named Kell stepped in and won the match. At BFL Park, Mark Jackson, he's the one in the cut, did his block, but later cooled down and kicked five. For Peter Bozasto, this tackle was the judge legal. Oh, a big After an even first half, Fitzroy won its first game of the year against formidable opposition in Kevin Sheedy's Inform Bombers. It's a goal! Beautiful goal to Mickey Conlon. Over the head of Perth, but he takes a beautiful mark. On he goes, here they go. Wilson, running round the members, a long handball. Really stretches Matt Rendell, who flicks one back with the left boot up towards full forward. No one able to mark. The players going in very strongly. Pick oh! What a goal by Marty Quinlan. Fierce rivals of the 70s, Hawthorne and North, met on neutral ground, but the Hawks proved far too good on the knee. Couldn't get that one. McCann got into his back, tuck, uh, takes it off the pack, snaps the goal. This looks all right. A finish for pass. It's a beauty. Oh, and a mark to Robertson. Robertson goes for a short pass to Tuck. He's got an open goal here for a goal. And he doesn't mess about in the Hawks. are looking great now. Too far for him. Goes to Byrne. Back to Buckanara. Long shot at goal by the West Australian. That's a good shot at goal by Gary Buckanara. Fumbling a hand pass over to Russo. It could be another goal coming up. It's a long shot. The highlight of the sixth round was the thriller at Victoria Park when Fortune seesawed until La Belle. And he's kicked his second goal. Coming with in front by one point. Teasdale from behind got it down. Wilson tried to burst through the pack. McMahon straightens up, puts it towards goal. Fitzroy at least level, but though no, they're in front by five points. David McMahon. Out to Barham. He'll show a bit of pace here. Ricky Barham puts it down once. He puts it down a second time. He comes up to the half forward flank, drives Collingwood into attack. It's right up near the forward pocket area, and the umpire said there will be a free kick where? Upfield or? No, downfield, Jack. It's back with Conlon, I think, will get the free kick. <laughs> Allen's high kick, right up towards the air. Coming across the front of the puck, a beautiful mark by Collingwood's miles, it looked like. But it's uh, pulled play on, and one point. Former Sam Groper Ken Hunter provided the outstanding solo performance of the round against St Kilda. His figures showed 10 marks, 13 kicks and 5 goals. Early in May, the BFL banned spectators from taking alcohol into grounds. And the same day, Fitzroy had the champagne porks popping with a three-goal win over the Hawks. Manane goes for the short pass, but almost taken by Quinlan. He recovers, goes towards goal. It's touched by Kelvin Moore. Kelvin Moore can't get the favourable bounce. Quinlan follows on down the ground, has another chance of a snap. And this time it's through the centre. A great goal by Quinlan. Four goals to Bernie Quinlan. Three goals, I should say, to Bernie ball in front of him, comes back onto the left foot, quickly gets the ball to boot, it's across the centre half forward, tucked there for Hawthorne, straightens up, no mistake of that, Tuck puts it through, and it's one point between the sides, Fitzroy, and forced forward by Thornton, picked up again, Thornton wanted to give the hand pass forward to McMahon, McMahon going goal!
Geelong slide from third in 1981 to also runs in 1982 became obvious in round seven when Carlton ran amok against them at Princes Park and they could answer with only seven goals. That deserved a goal, Pete, because that was magnificent play. These little men are doing a bit of damage to uh, Geelong at the moment from Carl. As they're going out for a goal, away, but you can put down your glasses about this one. It's all over by the shouting. It's right through for a goal. Oh, he's missed it. He gets the ball up to Bright. He's got the chance here to mark that. Oh, I'll tell you what, he didn't like to go after that one. Now he's got a by with the fault from Madula. A step for a goal. And he's put it through. How about that for luck? Finally, it's picked up by Johnson. A hand pass coming out the clock. The extra long player. Played over 200 games. He's put it through for a goal. What a beautiful goal by Clark. Oh, look at this kick. That's a beautiful kick, isn't it? Down towards the full forward position. Tui. Clark. And Clark puts it through. His third goal of the afternoon. Carlton running right away. Melbourne's twin-pronged attack of Mark Jackson and Jared Healy continued to impress, and against North, Goldsnake Healy booted eight in a side that lost by 37 points. The $475,000 Escort Championships were played in vastly contrasting weather to the main VFL competition. Stormy weather, heavy rain and one of the foggiest nights on record greeted the players at VFL Park. The highlight of the season was the magnificent play of the Swans and on grand final night, July 20, they conquered North Melbourne with play like this. They were a greatly improved player this year. They're hard to mark tonight. Chances for Tony Moore with his kick run so far. Let's see if his conversion rate is maintained. Another great goal. Two kicks, two goals. There was uh, his uh, cracker picked up by Kelly's kicked in the wide open spaces. Browning and Reed have got a run on. Here's a go for North. Oh, he's kicked it off the ground by accident, Smith, I'd say. A lot more determination. A hand pass from Hounsell out there to Danaher. A good short pass. A mark to Bernie Evans. This looks dangerous for North Melbourne. A long shot. And he's put it through for a goal. Goal number two. Having a great wrestling match. Oh, Reed missed that completely. And it's uh, Shimmer was putting it through for a goal. Goal number two. Then again by Allen. Now it's Morwood spinning out the pack. Well smothered by McCann. A go for the ball to come out. As a go now for Faschini. Snapped to the little fella. Has scored his second goal. Now the little right star. Got clear of Dench. Goes for a hand pass for Faschini. This looks dangerous. And another goal to the Swans. That's goal number four. Just can hardly believe that we've really got it. Thanks to Channel 7 for televising it. Uh, special cheerio to all the people up in Sydney. We want it for you too. Plays on quickly. Right up there looking for Taylor. Bartlett's in that front position needing two goals for his 700 goals for this Bartlett. Picks it up. There's the goal number one. Beautiful play by Bartlett's back there Picked up by Rollins, right down towards that full forward line. The, the goals continue to flow for 368 game Liverpool veteran Kevin Bartlett. And against St Kilda, he brought up his 700th with this snap. There it is, 700 goals to Kevin Bartlett. Toward the goal square. Only two points separated Richmond and Geelong at the final siren. But the umpires had their work cut out during the day, working out a number of points decisions. Love oh, nearly a trip for mine. The umpire has paid what? For Kevin Bartlett, this was the first time he'd been reported in his long career. He was destined to be cleared by the tribunal. While Phil and Jim continued to fire north with their amazing team play and cohesion, other members of the team were firmly implanting themselves in Brownlow medal calculations. The Gerard and Jacko show continue to thrill all supporters, especially this day when they helped the Demons to a fine 65-point win over the previous year's semi-finalists. Oh, Jacko. Jacko's looking for 15. <laughs> He's not going to get it. <laughs> 15. He's got it. Got it. Oh, 
And there's the new trick. <laughs> That's the one we've been promising you for weeks. Jacko has done it. Over the head no of, team uh, could unleash dynamite football players. in 1982 quite like the Blues. Against the Swans, they kicked 12 goals in the first quarter of their match on May 23rd to effectively quell any chances it had of being match of the day. It's unbelievable. It's another goal, Pete. 12 for the quarter, kicked by Jimmy Buckley. And Buckley has brought up his second goal. This is amazing football here at Princess Park. The Swans did come back, but flashy play proved little opposition to the slick Carlton machine. The Cats showed a few brief glimpses of form in 1982. One such glimpse was against North at VFL Park in round nine. The umpire said it is, it's a goal. Down the ground, Tui first in the ball and did well to attack that ball and allows Blake to come out and put it through for four points. Good play by Chip. The members of the VFL Tribunal reacquainted themselves with Ron Andrews and Mark Jackson after this disgraceful dust up at Windy Hill. Jacko was the guilty party and got two weeks. Andrew was the witness this time. The Bombers' eight goals win was set up with play like this. The Lions and Saints did battle, and it wasn't all easy sailing for Robbie Wall's boys. There's another one, Conlon in again. Controls it, gets away, snaps. It snaps truly for a beautiful goal. What a great kick it was. Great kick by Packham. Bad luck to the young fella. Because... Oh, great mark by Keel. Plays on with a hand pass to Packham. Here's a chance for the Saints. Packham on the left foot. Right up towards full forward. Here's danger. Over the back of the Packers. Burns. Grabs it. Left foot. Snap. Into the open goal. Goal to the Saints there. Right back in this game. Kick number seven coming 35,000 saw the 1982 grand finalists meet for the first time for the year. And for three quarters, it was a thriller. It was a left foot. Our forward. Long kick again into the goal square. Taylor flies off the ground. Roach is it? Or oh, Welsh? Goal. Welsh it was. Roach first of all. Tapped it to Welsh who put it through. The Tigers' third goal. Snap for goal up towards the teeth. The goal. The But then the Blues drew away. The centre half forward, Landy flew as a go for Bazasto. A hand pass to Johnson and a goal coming up for sure. A goal to come. Good play on the part of Bazasto. Fitzroy skipper Gary Wilson produced one of his most memorable games for years when he kicked seven goals in the Lions' 29 point win over Geelong. Takes the mark for Fitzroy on the half forward flank. Trying to do a bit too much again. He's looking for a hand pass downfield to Wilson. Wilson, 50 metres out, just about where the shot was taken by Roos before. And it might be a goal. Yes, it's a goal to Wilson, a great goal. Wilson stays in play with Mangles. He got bumped out by Manet, and that was good football. Wilson, a chance. He's going to take a bit of beating here. Wilson goes goalward. Look at that for a goal. At the Western Oval, Malcolm Black kicks seven for the Roos, and North Melbourne cruise to a 58-point win. It was the ninth time in ten games Footscray had been beaten, and it was destined to be Coach Royce Hart's last game with the club. The biggest crowd of the round turned up to see Melbourne hold on and win by seven points against Collingwood at the MCG. And Melbourne playing great football, he could be caught, now he's going to get out of that, Robert Flower. Here's his kick over looking for Wilson, Wilson's got Dalton. Oh, Wilson... Uh... Got into the back of Dalton or the other way round. Great play over there. Few in the crowd of 52,000 expected to see Tommy Hafey sacked two days later. Great goal. Couldn't have been a worse year. Everything that's happened has just been wrong. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, we just can't seem to get a win. We've run sides pretty close without getting a win, you know, which is, you know, terribly needed right now.
position of an assistant coach to the club. The senior coaching position will be discussed by the board over the next couple of days and the reserves coach Don McKenzie will conduct training tonight and will be the coach of the senior team for Saturday's match. Keith Gregg was reported in round 11 on a striking charge and after being cleared by the tribunal claimed his good name had been slurred. Gregg in the forward pocket steadies, has a shot at goal. What's he done with it? One point or is it a goal? For the Ruse, two shocking umpiring decisions would have proved costly as they lost to Carlton by nine points. A short pass coming over here. Should let it go up the goals. They're going over for Zusto now. Skips it back to Aspen. A step for goal. And it's through for a goal. With Vic Irwin at the helm and Rene Keek back in the lineup, Collingwood won its second match of the season, this time by six goals against St Kilda. The thriller of round 11 saw Richmond again frustrate the unlucky Swans, winning by a point. At Moorabbin, Melbourne continued its improvement with a 43-point win over the Saints. Needless to say, Jacko made more than a guest appearance. And brings up his second goal. In front of Jackson. And Jackson <laughs> entertaining the crowd. The ball delivered up toward the full forward position. Jackson tapped it out well to Croswell. Another Melbourne goal coming up off the boot of Brent Croswell. And it only took 20 seconds. On the 13th of June, Fitzroy and Richmond turned on the fireworks in one of the most bitter struggles of the season. Wilson, bad handball, but got one too high. Wilson will get the free kick. Kick wasn't too good. Charge for Jester Market. Oh, he got one back from Wilson and collected in fair and square, too. Beautiful hip and shoulder. Oh, the centre wing position, missed by Conlon. Oh, Gotts going in very solidly. Put Shand out of business, and Gotts doesn't look too good himself. Puts it out to the wing position. Oh, Malthouse could have been finished on Conlon. He doesn't look too good. Butler has shot at goal. In After dust settled, it was Richmond by 38 points with full forward Brian Taylor kicking 10 goals. That's good grab by Taylor. But a long kick into the square. Taylor again marks. What a day he is having. I think Richmond wanted to, uh, wouldn't play him early in the season. Well, that's not bad. Goal. A four goals. It's a chance for goal number 10 for Taylor. And he's put it through for goal number 10. Now that the club it was to be a hot time in the old town when Carlton and Collingwood met in the 13th round. When the flames were extinguished, so too were the Magpies, but not before three stirring quarters. Carlton, and I know the Blues are desperately looking for a big game from him as Kink fires towards goal. Looking for Teasdale, not well directed for the big fella, and he needs support, does it well. Shaw, Williams, Mark's in trouble, a left right foot snap. Great snap by Mark Williams. He's put it through. Taylor, Ashman, Jones again. Pushing it out the back door for Mazzasto. Showing extraordinary pace. Tapping the ball along in front. He's been watching uh, Conlon. A shoot towards goal. There's the real Mazzasto. Lee Matthews kicked five goals, including this beauty against Footscray. But it wasn't enough to stop new coach Ian Hampshire providing the boil over of the season. to right half forward, knocked away from Cloak, not too far by Andrews, ooh, a solid bump there with Welsh and they both went down, they're both out to it. Short pass is absolutely atrocious, bro, the umpire's got flattened by uh, Van der Haar, that's Morgan. And the, the Tigers and Bombers were on a collision course at VFL Park and Paul Van der Haar appeared to be right in the middle. The back there is always popped in that time, Perry got the, got him with a head tackle that time, couldn't hold the mark. He's it was a battle of the back lines until line. veteran Kevin Bartlett cut loose in the third quarter and Richmond maintained top spot on the ladder. North switched its home match against Essendon on June the 25th to the MCG. 
47,000 saw North in fine form, but Essendon came out victorious. Faster Keith, Greggy could cop one here. Another one over to Banks, running to an open goal. This could look good for North Melbourne, but as he missed it, he's got a throw for the goal. Oh, good mark to Vanderhaar, pressing over to Nigo. And now there's a chance for Hurdles, and the crowd go mad as he breaks clear. He'll lob this up in the goal square just about. Madden comes out, he's got it! for the Bombers, not kicking it, now he comes in, he's ready to fire, and that is, a, what a goal, so it's eight points in front now, the Bombers. Lee Matthews flattened Carlton's Robert Cobb, and was to feel heavy repercussions. Hughes has been dropped behind the play, well there's quite a few things going on here at Prince's Park, believe you me, uh, only seconds ago I said that. Matthews sitting on the turf. Peyton trying to get it. It was to be Hawthorne's day, though. One Matthews. victory and four Matthews clashes for the year for the Hawks, however. He doesn't, but he's put it through nonetheless. It's four points, three goals to Lee Matthews. And the face of me, Lee Matthews, a bit battered by today's encounter here at Prince's Park. He was dropped behind play. The Swans continued to improve. This time it was Colin Hounsell and a win over Fitzroy. There's no doubt about it. It's a goal. A beautiful goal by Hounsell. One of the goals of the day. The Hawks moved into premiership calculations at the MCG with their second win over topside Richmond with goals like these that thrilled the 48,000 strong crowd. Into the goal square, could even be a goal, it is! Oh, what a kick, Peter Knights! Back now to uh, Swab, the ball comes back again. Finally driven up there by Ablett, the back as Knights flies. It might be a goal, I think it is! Yeah, another goal by Ablett! Tuck again, but the umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to Hawthorne. He said, Go play off. Yes. Oh, what a confusing decision that one. It's a really a goal, it is. And that was kicked. I've got to pick the player up and kick that. It could have been Ever. It was. Simon Madden relinquished the Essendon captaincy in 1982, but this day kicked eight goals and ruled the air over Windy Hill in what many thought was his best game for the club. Simon Madden. Oh, oh beautiful what a mark. mark by oh, Simon Madden. Oh, oh, what a mark. Oh. The sun's in the eyes of Madden, but he took the mark. As he came in, I could see him shielding his eyes. Ten and a half forward. And oh. a great mark by Simon Madden, who's having an absolute picnic today. He faulted, get the ball moving. Madden up high. Oh, what a mark. Oh, we've seen this kind of take some great marks today. First year player Dale Dixon provided one of the runs of the year, but the Demons still went down by 17 points to Carlton. He's had about four bounces, five. Johnson won't catch him, and Dixon can run the entire length of the ground almost if he wants to. Right up towards full forward. Jackson got a hand to it. It's loose. Nice play there. Back towards, who's that? That's Kelly O'Donnell shooting a goal, and it's there. Hawthorne kicked 13 goals in the first quarter of its match against North and the goals continued to pile up as the Hawks kicked their highest ever score. 32 goals, 14 behinds, 206 points. Towards that half forward line, it's just this elusive goal that's going to break the record. Will it come here from Green? The long kick in towards goal. There's the new record for the Hawthorne football club. It was a record day for full forwards as Carlton's West Australian full forward Ross Ditchburn kicked 12 against the Saints. And he's just through for full points. Oh, uh, well, they all thought it was a side push. Ashburn to Dish, Ditchburn, he's taken another mark. So can he kick his 12th goal? Down about 40 metres from where he'll kick. Studying concentration. Head over the ball. Good style. And the style worked by the look of it. So 12 goals out of 21 to Ditchburn. On the left foot he goes. Another ex sand Roper, Simon Beasley, back. kicked a dozen against Geelong Beasley in the Bulldogs' third the win of the year. Goal he goes, and it is a goal. Kicks it long. Here's a chance for Beasley again. He's up high over the back. A beautiful mark. What a mark by Beasley over the back. Simon Beasley lining up for goal number 12. He kicks it on its way. A beautiful goal it is. Goal number 12. Have a look at that there. Is Simon Beasley, magnificent game of football, being hoisted of up. The crowd have been carried off a magnificent 12 goals. Close. Melbourne's Robbie Flower captained the Victorian side in Perth and gave great leadership after being moved to centre half forward on Ross Glendinning. Flower kicked two brilliant goals and Victoria won this state of origin match by 23 points. Great play, Victoria, and a fitting result. And it will be number 26, uh, Tui, to take it. Half forward, Flower.
to Flower. Flowers on right centre wing, playing at centre half forward. Flower and Glendenning. Or Flower burning at centre half forward. The Swans to go to attack. The Swans inch closer to a finals berth with a hard fought win over Essendon. A win made even more creditable because it was achieved at Windy Hill. He fires and he's put it right through the middle. Great piece of play. And uh, they're staying with him. The Swans are out now to uh, Otway. Finally, Madden's kick is smarter. Then we see Morewood going forward for another goal. And the uh, Swans are alight at the moment. Nagel dropped an easy one. He's made a lot of mistakes today. And there's Reese Jones firing at the goals. But he's off target. Can Fashini mark it? He's got it. He'll get up and run for an open goal. This will be dangerous. And he's put it through the little fella for goal number two. And what a game it is. And the Bombers in trouble now. 1981 Brownlow medalist Bernie Quinlan had a fairly lean year. But this day against Collingwood was back at his best. Straight away he plays on, goes towards goal. And there's the equaliser. They're again battling. To be the Lions purchased former St Kilda captain and Geelong reject Gary Sidebottom. And the big fellow didn't let them down. His performances late in the year justified their faith. Oh, it's a great one handed by Gary Sidebottom. He's played on too. He's played on, hooked it back. He's caught them all asleep and he's put it through for a goal. What a great effort that goal. The VFL Tribunal had a busy season. Listening to 61 cases, the results were 26 players suspended for a total of 58 weeks. These were the incidents that stirred the public. Attack. The reports. Val Perovic was the first player suspended at the new VFL house. He got one week. Ron Andrews copped the most severe penalty of the year. Five weeks for this incident with Phil Malin. Collingwood's Rene Kink received three weeks. The victim, Barry Rollings. North's Phil Cracker, three weeks. Mark McClure of Carlton, two weeks. And a good 25 metre punch down towards half forward. Paul Morwood gets a push. Richmond's Jim Jess was suspended for two weeks, and this incident cost him a place in Richmond's final side against Carlton. Oh! Well, you saw that, I think. Need uh, comment on that at all. A nasty brawl at Geelong. For Craig Stewart and Richard Murray, the penalty was three weeks apiece. The most controversial incident, two matches, both finals for Carlton's Wayne Johnston. The newest member of the 300 Game Club, North's Gary Dempsey, started the ball rolling against Melbourne. And we see Atkins now, hand passing on McCann to kick this goal, I feel sure. It's a goal, picked by McCann. The name who set the crowd alight, I don't think we have to introduce him, his five goals took his tally to 50. Let go for a moment. Oh, it's a Melbourne cheer squad down there, Bob, or the Melbourne supporters behind the goal. He was saying Barrick. Ahead of Healy. Mark Jackson coming out, showing great speed. Gets a hand pass out to Wilson. Wilson dummies around. Chance of a goal coming up as Wilson puts it right through the centre. Melbourne really on fire at the moment. From finalist in 81 to also Rams in 82, it was a chilling drop for Fitzroy. But in round 17, they showed their class with a great win over Hawthorne at the park. Mick Conlon kicked six and Rendell five in the Lions' 47-point upset. Peyton loses sight of it. Conlon tackled when he didn't have the ball. The call was play on. Away he goes. Maybe Battleship. Oh, side bottom and go. They both uh, lined each other up and no damage done. Conlon up running half the field towards full forward. Oh, Mark in the goal. Quinlan and Byrne. Byrne over his shoulder. Goal! It's a great goal, Pete. It was. There for O'Halloran, but that's a great mark tonight. He's up, runs to an open goal and puts it through. Brilliant play. Things finally, a hand pass coming out now. Quinlan from Parrish. A long and a beautiful hand pass from Quinlan over to McMahon. And this looks like another goal coming up, but he uh, hasn't speaked it through, has he? Yes, a goal. Oh, it's Bernie Quinlan, but it's a bit too long. It'll bounce OK. Spins away beautifully. And Superboot fires. He put it through. What a magnificent bit of play on the part of Bernie Quinlan that time.
Collingwood led the Swans by five points at the last change of their match at Victoria Park. But with the lure of a finals berth in the air, the Swans charged home and won the game by a kick. And pass goes the short pass is well taken to Fashini into the open goal. I think he thought of a pass. He's looking for a hand pass to get himself out of trouble. Found Cooper. The ball's taken away from them by Hounsel, who shoots toward goal. That's very close indeed. That's a very good goal. Kicked by Colin Hounsel, looking for Roach. Almost Richmond was still sitting on top of the ladder, and Geelong didn't give them one bit of worry in this 18th round game. After Waitman into the open goal, it's a goal. Right. was one of the best on the ground. Puts it down towards Clake. Can't complete it, but the big fella has brute strength to get away and chip to Wiley. He swings onto the left boot, goes goalwards, and what a start for the Tigers. What a start. In towards the goal square, big Madden and O'Hara on the one hand, he's got it, has he? Ho -ho! Justin Madden took one of the marks of the year at Windy Hill and followed up with one of the worst kicks of the season against Hawthorne. Gallop, galloping giraffe killed him, that dumb. Oh. And uh, at point blank range, one would suggest that he wouldn't miss. That he has. Oh! Oh, God. Oh. Heard. Back to Foles. A long kick coming up from him. It's a goal. At four o'clock, the Bombers looked certainties. But then along came Lethal Lee to change all that. It's a beautiful book. Steady shoots. Goal. Two goals to Hawthorne. And Deepia Domenico. Matthews can't take the mark. Shrugs the tackle. A shot at goal is through. Look at Jeans going out. Go, go, he's saying. They're there with merit. Oh, the post is broken. Matthews hit it and broke the point post. <laughs> oh, talk about a he-man. How was that? He split it right down in half. <laughs> a fantastic effort by Lee Matthews. The half forward, With brother Jim sidelined through a shoulder injury, Turco. Phil Cracker it's bore the brunt of the load for North Cracker late in the season, and forward. he continued to excel. Awkward kicking style. He's put it through for another one. Good in front, Balaki behind, had the grab, didn't hold it long enough. <laughs> Phil Cracker, amazing! Oh, what a goal! This was David Dench's 250th game for North, and one he wouldn't like to remember. A real nasty, they're both out here and Johnson. Likewise, the boundary umpire at Princess Park the same day. He tangled with Hawthorne's David O'Halloran and was forced to take a dramatic exit. And a poor little boundary umpire has taken a complete shirt front, completely unintended, of course. Ever the fellow coming in in Domburg can't get it. Matthew, oh, got struck, I thought. Yes, yes, pick and put his hand up, as much as to say I didn't do it. Up towards the forward area, but in the oh. way, Calvin Moore, it should be a 15-metre penalty. Thumped the ball down, didn't try and take the mark. That was a strong piece of work by Alan Goat. For the Hawks won by 22 oh, points, thanks once again to the brilliance of Lee Matthews, who kicked eight Matthews. goals. Essendon went into the final quarter of its match against Melbourne, trailing, but eight goals in the quarter put paid to the Demon's dreams of an upset. Jackson from behind, oh, clever play. Jackson maybe should have handballed that one. Alex to have a kick at the goals. He put it through. A great goal by Mark Jackson, and up go the arms and a little dance. <laughs> Ah, well, he is, you've got to admit it, he is very entertaining. The build-up to the 1982 season was dominated with talk of South Melbourne's move to the Harbour City. We had coaching upheavals, a player's strike, and finally, the Sydney Swans were born. Under 200,000 people saw the Swans in Sydney, and they produced some memorable games. Twice they lost to eventual finalists by a solitary kick, and in their best performance of the season, routed Carlton by 34 points in front of their best crowd, some 25,000. Some highlights of the Swans, Sydney style. Bazusto and Browning having a gate battle. There's Bazusto. Oh, he's got one right across the front chin that time. From Reed, the umpire going across. He might take his number. But Reese Jones, a beautiful pickup and a hand pass to Fashini and a goal coming up. And only three points the difference now. Gives uh, Tony Moore the chance. A hand pass to Bernie Evans. A left foot snap towards the goal. This is the better one. This is through. Out of the goal to the swan. Danaher couldn't mark the ball. Finally picked up now by Hounslow. Running shot. It's a goal. Oh, the swan's going now, if you don't mind. Punched away here by the Carlton defence. Right's clear. Hand pass out wide to Danaher. A left foot snap at the goals. And this looks pretty good. Another goal. It's back over to Fitzpatrick in the forward pocket. Over to Ditchburn, almost the fumble. Back to Fitzpatrick and the goal spread. And he ran it behind him, but he still put it through. 
and it's grabbed by Scotty May have dropped that is called play on a snap by Tony Moore but this looks good it's another goal Mickey Malthouse, he's already been reported. Mickey Malthouse was in the wars against Carlton when the future grand finalists met at the MCG on August the 14th. Mickey Malthouse. Malthouse won't come off the ground. He's telling the doctor, I've got maybe the doctor in the fur coat. Now the runner's coming out and said, you've got to go off. The difference of 42 points, three goals to McClure. It was a tough, hard-fought match, the with the Blues keeping their record intact against the Tigers. Let's see who that is. There's the go now for uh, Wayne Hart, but he's grabbed. But Carl Schrott, he's a part of clear. Good play on the part of home. He goes for a hand pass. Now to Johnson. This looks dangerous. He runs into trouble over to Buckley. Buckley fires at the goal. He's put it through. Jimmy Buckley, goal number two. Good pressure applied on him here. It's Ben Smith. Gets the ball out to Faschini. He has time to have one bounce. Gives a hand pass over the top to Brown. Down went Silvio Faschini against the Hawks. And down went the Swans' hopes of playing in the finals. Golden brings up his second goal. Shane Morwood. It's Matthews at the back. Hawthorne kicked 10 goals to two in the second half to provide the swan song. the possession on that occasion by Carter. And it's kept by Lovridge. It's a goal. Good football by Hawthorne once again. He's ridden a couple of bumps. He shoots it out the tuck. Tuck goes goal, but it's chopped off. But it's tuck again. Into the open goals he travels. And he's put it right out of the ground. As Greg Hutchison goes towards centre wing and flower the champion. Here he comes onto the left boot. Jackson and Pickin. Jacko has been doing it with one Jacko hand. Jacko kicked seven against the bewildered time? Magpies no, who thought they'd seen everything. <laughs> Another surprise from the game's most amazing personality. And look at him. <laughs> I'll be praised. <laughs> what a great game he's played. Don't worry, Billy is saying, that's seven to my name, and I'm loving every minute of it. Mark Kerr and Holden, Mark Kerr's grabbed, he's got a free kick, now he can play on. And we see Ditchburn stabbing for goal. The first of nine to Carlton's Ross Ditchburn, and a morale-sapping blow to North in the 21st round as the Blues went on to win by 70 points. It's a goal. Yes, a goal. One goal to Johnson. Had a great knockout that time by Bazasto. In towards the square and fisted through by Duell. Now it hasn't gone through, picked up by Blight. Beautiful ball, shot of goal by Blight. This is a superb effort for six points. Ball tapped off by Dempsey. Coming in to meet it now is Bazasto. A snap for goal. That's not a bad ball. What a goal by Bazasto. Ten and a half forward, puts it forward. Matthews Hawthorne beat Melbourne by 11 Giles. points. But this was the incident Matthews that had the whole town talking. Gave Giles one behind play. Matthews now in the hands of, uh, well, three or four um, players. You can see for yourself. A little bit of fireworks here at the MCG. The Tiger middle, Crosby was remarkable. not so lucky. He was reported and missed the last game of the year. Malcolm Blight had already won a McGarry medal, a Brownlow. And as the season drew to a close, he kicked seven against Richmond to move within striking distance of his 100th goal. Kick looking for Malcolm Blight. He's at the back. Can he mark it? No, he might have got this. He said play on, but he's got the ball now. A snap for goal, but now it's number seven. A beautiful bit of play on the part of Malcolm Blight. Finally, it comes down to Rollins. In the end, it was Richmond by 19 points. Finally picked up by Rollins with a hand pass to Williams, who fumbled. He's got to get clear. Back to Rollins again. A snap for goal, and he's put it through. And the Tigers are coming back. Towards Carlton had recovered McClure from a mid-season slump Johnston. and looked back Johnston to their best to against right Fitzroy. Sheldon, Sheldon the player all on his own and down there we see Basasto having plenty of time, actually missed the mark, comes up again, steadies, puts a kick goalward and it's a goal by Basasto. Well, what a piece of football by Carlton. Geelong came back brilliantly against Collingwood in the final game of the season, but in the end, it settled on one kick. The man with the ball is Peter Johnston, and his kick cost the Cats the game. Two of the game's dinosaurs, Giant Ruckman, Gary Dempsey and young Justin Madden, put on their own show at BFL Park in the elimination final.
North recovered brilliantly from two bad defeats in the build-up to the finals and ran out victorious by 13 points. And Henshaw in the pocket. Glenn Dinning, did he get one in the back? Yeah, he started to play well this quarter too, Glenn Dinning. He was unsighted in the first term, wasn't he? Really? Well, he had the job of, uh, had the job of stopping, uh, of stopping uh, Vanderhaar. Neagle coming off the ground. Back up there towards McCann. And Crow neither can take the mark. There's Zimmerman. And look at him go with a hand pass. Over it comes there to Phil Cracker. He's looking for the goals. He's found them. Donald there knocked down to Phil Cracker. A snap at the goals. Will it make the distance? Will it bounce? Let's see what happens. It goes through. Back flank up towards centre wing, a well placed kick. At the MCG, Wayne Harms personally orchestrated Hawthorne's downfall in the qualifying final. It was to be Carlton by 58 points, and Harms the hero. The, the corridor, so to speak, Kennedy got the ball to ground, Clark went for a hand pass. It's taken by Harms, he goes forward, he's got another one. His third goal, Wayne Harms running hot deep too. He'll be looking for Ditchburn, who's moving out from the full forward position. Ditchburn can't quite get that. Harms and Ditchburn nearly collided. Ditchburn nearly on the boundary line. Gets it out to Harms. He's going to have a snapshot to Ward Goal. nearly a miracle goal. It is a miracle goal. He's kicked it. How did he kick that one? Well, he's one of the best centre players in the competition, so why not? Richmond's David Cloak snapped the first goal of the day, and from this point on, the Tigers never looked back as they defeated Carlton for the first time of the year in the second semi. Beautiful kick. Perevic and Cloak. Bartman at the back. Snaps on a goal. Bartman second. And Henry does it again. Down toward the half forward zone. An opportunity for First game of Dermot Brereton got Bradford things going for the Hawks and was to kick five goals away. against Did North. A chance for Ede with the ball in front of him. Oh, heavy work by Matthews. Ede goes toward goal. And it's through. Heavy work by Matthews, leaving one North player absolutely flat out on the ground. So uh, we'll put North Melbourne out of trouble. Well, into trouble just about. He went for the hand pass to Demetrio, chopped off by Bacanari, goes toward goal, and that's through. Oh. Great goal by Gary Bacanara. Bad football, North Melbourne. In towards Carmen, front position, and takes a good mark. Looks for the player going past. Greg can go quickly up to the goals, looking for Blight, who's two out with uh, Moore being held. Was Blight? No, he up oh. Yes, I was dead right. I thought the umpire was going to play the other way. So Blight is going for his 100th goal. And the siren has sounded. So we know the police have taken arrangements here that when Blight does kick his 100th goal that they will cordon off the areas where the North Melbourne supporters are. But it's right on siren time, so the police efforts... For Malcolm Blight, this was goal time. 100. For his 100. He's kicked it after the siren at quarter time. Only 61,000 people were at VFL Park for the preliminary final, and for the Hawks it was farewell to 1982. For the Blues, their third grand final in four years. Closely attended by Matthews. A burn, but he got under that one. Austin's in the front here, but uh, gets around two opponents. He's Matthews and Austin. Oh, there's a great mark by Austin. Not going to tangle with either of those guys. Matthews having a few uh, words to say to Bort Lotto. And goes after him. That's unlikely, Matthews. The 1982 Brownlow medal count took place at the Southern Cross Hotel last Monday night. And this is how the evening climaxed. Lock Ryan to come up to the stage to be presented with his medal by the president of the Victorian Football League. On behalf of the Victorian Football League, I officially declare Brian Wilson of the Melbourne Club the winner of the 1982 Brownlow medal. And I know on your behalf, all the people here at the Southern Cross Hotel tonight and all the many hundreds of thousands of people out there watching this telecast, you'd like me to pass on to Brian your congratulations also. Knock on, McClure has a chance, he's well caught. Johnson in the goal square, snaps off target. Or is it a goal? It's through. Bounce favours Richmond. Martello should get there first. In pursuit. Harms comes in. Another goal coming up for the Blues. He's put it through. 
Great start to Carl and the Blues are late in the first quarter. Oh. Having a real deep dong go out there. Yeah, dip out there. Oh, Jones has had his number taken. And Jones and Lee are into it. Jones has had his number taken. There's another go. Sheldon's into it too with the reins. Little Bath of moving around the back nicely. Goes for a short pass. Now it's Rioli's turn. Running to an open goal. And he's put it through for full points. Great play on the part of Kevin Bath. Rioli, snap at goal. An amazing goal from Rioli, his second. It's Patrick quickly plays on over centre half forward. There's Bazasta, what a mark. He quickly plays on and he goes for a hand pass to Hunter. It could be a goal coming up. Yes, it's a goal. Half forward. Malin. Almost caught. Long shot at goal. Going through. Yes, it is. Bazasto in front. And marks. Oh, I thought he should have played that one. Ashman has a snapshot in the meantime, and he's put it through, so it doesn't matter. A long shot. Jess in the goal square. Has he marked? Bartlett snaps for goal in the meantime. It's a goal. Pressure here. Ashman comes in, takes the ball away from him. A hand pass back to McClure. Another one over to Bazasto, and a goal for sure. Carlton, two goals in front. It's a big chance that Carlton could win two on end now. Out it comes there, and uh, the mark couldn't be taken by Dunn. Tapped on by McClure very smartly. Over to Mark Two. There's the one that counts. And that's the goal, I would say. That's the premiership. Four counts for 1982. Well, then we see the Carlton captain receiving the premiership uh, cup and holding it up for the crowd. And what a proud moment that must be for him and their coach, David Park.